the Krebs cycle occurs in the mitochondrion, which means then, of course, pyruvate has to get into the mitochondrion. The enzyme that would be predicted by Krebs' supercatalyst notion for oxidizing pyruvic acid was never found, despite a lot of searching. Instead, much later in the 1950s, these two reactions, both exergonic, were discovered in the mitochondrion. And the first one is the oxidation of pyruvic acid by the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase. As you can see, it's an exergonic reaction. And the electron carrier that grabs the electrons away from pyruvate is NAD+, and it becomes NADH. And the other thing to point out here is that in this process, the first of the carbon dioxide molecules that are to result from glucose oxidation or glucose respiration has now come off. And since there were two pyruvates per glucose, we would say that two of the carbon dioxide molecules have been accounted for for the overall combustion of a molecule of glucose. The other reaction is a second one taking one of the products, acetyl S coenzyme A, one of the products of the first reaction, and linking it with oxaloacetate, OAA, to make the first component of the citric acid cycle, namely citric acid. It is in fact acetyl S coenzyme A then that is oxidized by the supercatalyst Krebs cycle. And the enzyme that does it is citrate synthase, shown here. So no mystery anymore. There is an enzyme that links the oxidation of an organic acid to the Krebs cycle, but the organic acid that's actually being oxidized is not pyruvate, but acetyl coenzyme A, or acetate. A word about coenzyme A, which has a sulfhydryl group, so we often just call it coenzyme ASH, or CoASH. Well, first of all, it's a B, a B vitamin derivative. In its structure, it has an adenine and the SH, or thiol group. The full structure is not shown here. In its interaction with pyruvate, pyruvate loses a carbon, remember, to become carbon dioxide, and the remaining two carbons of pyruvate are the acetate. And the acetate forms a thioester linkage with the coenzyme A. Coenzyme A is often referred to as activating the molecules to which it binds in this way. So acetic acid is essentially an activated acetate. Activated is a nice word because it implies activity or active. Thioester linkages, like the phosphoanhydride linkages that we saw earlier, are high energy linkages that release a lot of free energy when hydrolyzed. So the thioester linkage in acetyl coenzyme A has now captured, at least for the moment, some of the free energy that was originally in the nutrient glucose way at the top of glycolysis. Let's take a look at the highlights of the Krebs cycle. Remember this whole cycle, everything you see here happens twice per starting glucose molecule. It is a series of reactions of which four are redox reactions. And take a look, during that cycle, two more carbon dioxides come off. For two turns of the cycle, that's four of them. That represents the rest of the carbon dioxides that come off of respiration. There is, in step five, a substrate level phosphorylation. In higher organisms, that results in the production not of ATP, but of GTP. In a subsequent reaction, the GTP transfers its phosphate to ADP to make ATP. So the net result of this substrate level phosphorylation is to produce another ATP, that is one per cycle, or two more ATPs per glucose, per two turns of the cycle. Bacteria actually make the ATP right away. It's only the higher organisms that have this intervening GTP production. There's our thioester linkage on the acetyl coenzyme A. And I want to point out that the free energy of hydrolysis of thioesters figures twice in the mitochondrion in the oxidation of acetyl coenzyme A, once outside the cycle itself, or actually at the beginning of the cycle, in which acetyl coenzyme A condenses with oxaloacetate, a two carbon and a four carbon compound come together to make the six carbon citric acid. That is an energy requiring reaction fueled by the hydrolysis of the thioester linkage. And the second place is actually in step five. The energy to form the GTP in high organisms or the ATP in bacteria comes from the hydrolysis of a thioester linkage. I don't show that in step five, but you'll see it later. So the net result of one turn of the Krebs cycle is to produce three NADHs, a single molecule of GTP in higher organisms, or ATP in bacteria, and one FADH2, and the release of two molecules of carbon dioxide. Remember, just multiply everything in that box by two per glucose that you started with.